thinking of calling this spot Dam Camp. Not what you're thinking like Band Camp, but Dam Camp. G'day everyone, Corey from Rockpile, how you going? So, we're down at a little spot down here. I've uh, got the dam in the in the background over there. Um, been clearing a few branches and bits of debris and stuff. And we've kind of come to this little area, sort of around here. We're thinking of calling this we're thinking of calling this spot Dam Camp. Not what you're thinking like Band Camp, but Dam Camp. And just for the record, no flutes were harmed in the making of this campground. So I'll just give you a little wander around at what I'm thinking. I've just come down uh, with the lawnmower. That was, <laughs> that was an interesting ride. So, I just drove the little Hilux in here yesterday and just flattened a bit of grass. So, have a fallen tree here which will need to be removed. I'm going to try and leave that tree in the centre as a bit of shade. And looking at clearing some of that fallen stuff in there and possibly making like a little shelter I don't know maybe like an outdoor kitchen outdoor kitchen type thing I guess my thoughts are just making something a little place because we have a quite a nice block well we think we do you know and we're just thinking instead of having like a barbecue or whatever up at the house we could just stroll down here, bring the dogs if they if they're behaved, and just have a little fire, a few afternoon drinks, you know, listen to the birds, watch the water, just a peaceful little spot. So I'm gonna try and just get in here with the mower and just see what I can sort of cut down. I'm not I'm not chasing I'm not I don't want it to look like grass. <coughs> excuse me but I'm just thinking if I can cut it down cut it down some that's the first step cut it down uh, find out where all the rocks are I can see one here another one over there so find out where the rocks are and just kind of get the area looking pretty flat and then I can start um, chopping some of this up and might make a, that might be the first little bonfire you know just put that in a pile start burning it so I guess this is one of those projects where you it's not really going to benefit anything apart from personal pleasure you know just a nice spot to come and hang out with Mrs RP on those nice afternoons that we get and I'll just go up we'll just head over to the dam over here and we'll just have another bit of a look so yeah it's quite nice down here I must say. Oh, <laughs> I was standing on an ant's nest. Oh. As the water level rises, the ants come more and more to the surface because they don't really like getting their chambers flooded. Which, you know, you could imagine that if you're a little ant and you lived underground and all of a sudden you're getting a flood. Oh, not good.
All right, so as you can see, that only took like five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. Found a few rocks. Blades on the mower um, are a pretty old set. They were all the original ones since new. And uh, yeah, they've hit a few rocks in their time. I do have a brand new set, which I probably won't put on when I do this sort of mowing. I'll wait till we've got like some good areas cleared and that way I know I'm free from hitting rocks. So yeah, so that opened that up quite a lot. Uh, now I'm just going to get on the, the whipper snipper and just start working my way along the bank here and uh, we'll see where that gets me. All right. Let's go warm up that puppy. Just about need a science, bloody science degree to put this thing on. I think it goes like that. Yep, that's how it goes. It doesn't look very pretty, but I'll tell you what, saves your bloody back when you've got this adjusted just right the machine just hangs on here and that takes the uh oh it's got a twist in it that takes the weight here we go the weight of the machine and you basically just steer it and it doesn't take much effort at all but i know if i don't have this on after half an hour or so my bloody back's killing me so this is very handy uh, it's just a still whipper snipper, whatever the model number is. It's an FS91. Had this for a while. I use a full metal blade on it. Um, I drew them up and got them laser cut. Put a whole heap in the shed. They just work out so much cheaper than buying like a metal blade from the shop. These are only like oh, six dollars each or something. And uh, last for ages they do let's see if this thing is going to start choke on it's got fuel in it oh yeah no it's got fuel all right doesn't take long to clear a bit of an area and you can sort of then you get to know what you're working with when it comes down to the, the actual land when you get rid of all the overgrown you know growth and weeds and stuff so what are we left with we're left with a few big rocks over here big rock over there a mound of dirt here which I'd say was part of the uh, like here that mound part of the dam construction or something and then as we come around this way we've got quite a few fallen branches probably from that tree that are kind of all scattered through this area so that will just need to be uh, we'll pull them out just one by one and reclaim a bit more cleared area and over here so we'll pull that big log out um, and then we've got this one, this branch here that's fallen. So we'll get rid of that and then we'll be able to mow this area. And then uh, might actually bring the uh, excavator down here. Doesn't seem that wet, but maybe I might have to wait a bit because if I get the excavator bogged, well, that's the heaviest thing that we own. And 
nothing we have will pull that out. And that could end in disaster. And we're not making a disaster movie at damn camp, that's for sure. You know, with some giant alligator that's going to come out of the murkiness and eat you. <laughs> I've seen way too many movies. So, I'm just going to try and get that rock out with the shovel and there's another one in the ground over there I'm going to try and get out. Uh, I'm going to leave those couple of big ones. We're going to make a fire pit down here so oh, I reckon maybe out there. What do you reckon? There's like a little uh, a little spit here. We call it a spit like a little pointy bit that goes out into the water. Obviously in summer when this goes down, it's going to look a lot different, but we don't have fires in summer anyway. So I might utilise that that big rock as part of the fire pit and maybe just make, you know, like a circular stone fire pit, maybe one and a half metres round. What's that like? Five foot round, roughly, out of rocks. And... Uh, that's where we, oh, there's a bee swarm up there. Let's go see if we can see it. Not sure if you can hear that or not, but there's a bee swarm happening in the bush here. And normally they gather and they kind of hang in like a big clump. Now, I'm going to just walk through here very slowly because I'm on a big ant's nest as well, which isn't helping. And let's try and see if we can find it. But it sounds like that they're moving on because they were above the dam. Not that I want to get caught in a swarm of bees because I've got better things to do, you know, so if everyone manages to behave, we'll be okay. I don't know if we've brought you down to the sort of back of the dam. Yeah, okay, so I can, I can see the swarm. Uh, you guys probably won't be able to see it on camera. But it's quite in the distance, in the centre of screen, over there. And it's heading out of this tree land area, and it's going that way. Well, seeing as I'm here, right, let's go for a little wander around the back of the dam. As you can see, I'll just go down here. Oh, I'm just going to pay attention because otherwise I am going to end up in the water. And the camera is probably going to end up getting thrown over my shoulder. But down at the back of the dam, now you can see the in previous movies we've made, we've described the tree line to you guys. So yeah, this is as pretty much as high as the water will get. That is. It does go a little bit higher, maybe another, you know half a foot or so depending on uh, uh, when the, the rain flow is like really flow, flowing in here but the overflow kind of picks up pretty quick and gets rid of it so let's walk back up here okay so I'm on the dam bank like the, the very back wall of the dam I am it's quite big it's quite high here um, and I'll just sort of pan around and show you what's behind our dam. So, lots of bush, fallen trees that have just been, judging by the look of them, they've been fallen for a long time. They have. There is a fresh pile of in the background over there of trees that were pushed out with the loader when 
this whole new boundary fence got done. They needed access for that. And this is kind of where they got to with machine and then the rest of it was on foot because there's no way you can get a machine up that hill there. We'll just have a little listen. probably enough listening. So this is quite a wide section here. This top of the damn bank I'm standing on currently is probably close to four metres wide. Oop. Oh, I didn't see that bird in the tree. That was like one of those big uh, kestrel things. Jeez, lucky it didn't eat me. That's the thing with the Australian bush. There's so much stuff in here that wants to eat you. All right, I'll give you some context as to where I am currently. Over that way, you can see where the lawnmower is in the background, and that's the bit I was just mowing and stuff. And I've walked around. The bee swarm was about there, roughly. And I've walked all the way around the damn bank. And then we've come to, this is our overflow side. So this is like one of those, oh, I don't even know the proper wording for it, but basically our water comes in from upstream, flows in here. This fills up as like a dam, like a basin. And then the overflow, instead of having like a normal say overflow, which is at the opposite end, which can get quite a bit of current up and cause erosion, our overflow loops back around um, and almost to like a, oh, like a level sill type, possibly not level sill as in the actual level sill terminology, but it's quite a vast area in there, and it just kind of fills up like a, like a tide, I guess, and then it just overflows down here. So, uh, I can see... Uh, water. Well, no, actually, I can't. Sorry, I was going to say I could see it moving, but that's just like little uh, oh, bugs and stuff on the water surface. But if I actually focus on some of the foliage in the water, it's actually very still. So we probably haven't got, well, we haven't had rain for the last day or two, so there's not much coming in, which means that there's not much going out. But yeah. That's the overflow, and that just continues down, and it goes into a, another creek system next door, and there's there's a few more dams next door, and you know, so on. Creek system, dam, creek system, dam. And eventually, it ends up, oh, where does this one go to? This would probably end up in the, the main river in town, I reckon. Just come down here a little bit more. Not really that much to see down here apart from fallen trees, frogs, water, long grass. It's beautiful. It really is awesome. I don't know why you just wouldn't want to have like dams and streams and creeks and you know just water holding water holding areas on your land it's just it's so much better for the landscape you know like, like all this water eventually will soak away it'll evaporate as well you know, you can't forget the evaporation factor. I'm sure there's some sort of percentage you could, ratio you could work out for surface area versus evaporation, but I'm not that cluey. Duck over there is having a great time. So yeah, that's our little tour 
of the sort of behind the dam. When I was a kid, we used to go down to like a local wetlands area with our push bikes and we'd spend every weekend down there just riding through the street, like, like stuff like this, just on your bike riding through it. And you spend like during the week, you're like rebuilding your bike, changing your bearings and stuff and fixing your flat tires and... And then on the weekend come, you'd, you'd ride down to like the swamp and the wetland and you'd be covered in mud and crap. Oh, it's just... <laughs> as much as I want to try it now, eh, probably not. You know? I'll, I'll go back up to the house <laughs> with my mountain bike and covered in mud and <laughs> Mrs. Rockpile will just look at me and go, what the hell have you been doing? You're not five anymore. <laughs> I know I'm not five. Oh, actually, I can see the water running. There we go. Oh, that's a good example, isn't it? And I found where it's actually exiting. So, as you can see, I'll just go down here. Careful. So, you can see the water running. So this is quite a narrow section, almost like a bottleneck section. Now you can see up here where we've got the large, uh, the body of water, it's not flowing. It's actually raising, it'll be filling up and it will be raising like a tide. And there's no flow in that. But as we narrow up to the narrow exit, it starts to pick up speed and it starts to show visible signs of flowing. And then if we follow it, how am I going to do this without getting too wet? If we follow it down here, alright, so look at this. So you can see it there flowing. And if I move, oh, it literally only a meter to my right it goes out into a a bit of a larger body of water and you can see the flow has really slowed down and then as it leaves that it picks up a little bit more pace again so this is what we talk about when we talk about slowing the flow so naturally the slower the water, the less invasive it is to the landscape, I would say. And we're just learning all this, you know, just through research, watching unknown amount of videos on YouTube about water, water flow, water direction, water, the effects of water, large bodies, small bodies, level sills, beaver dams, leaky weirs, you name it, we are researching it. Because we really want to try and hydrate our property here. And we have a lot of water potentially to deal with. You know, like we have nearly 95 meters of elevation change from the bottom of the creek here to the top of the hill up there and we've got a hundred acres. So all that water, it goes somewhere, you know? So why not, just got to duck under a branch, why not try and catch it? And not, I'd use the word control, but very in a very literal, uh, minimal sense. So if we can control it by, through swales, retention ponds, you know, leaky weirs. Well, that's great. So I just, there's just so much to talk about when it comes to water. I could, I could probably waffle on for like three days and only like scratch the surface of, of what we want to do with our water around here. So, all right, I'm just going to turn this off um, and I'm going to walk back over to the lawnmower and we'll pick it we'll pick it up there when I get back there now if you like what you see 
please subscribe, like, share. Everything you do really helps us. So as it so happens, I get sidetracked a bit, you know, hence a little wander around the dam and my little rant about water, but hey, I like water a lot. So I might just uh, do a bit of shovel work for 10 minutes and then I probably really need to go and get the chainsaw. So let's just see how the time is. How is the time? Time is 2.14. I think this is going to look pretty cool. I reckon. If we get rid of that branch, that fallen one and that mound of dirt. And then tidy up around that tree. I think we'll be looking pretty good. Chop chop with the saw, little fire, a bit more chop chop. Can't wait to be sitting down here on a chair, a little fire, cooking some snags, a bit of steak, looking at the water. Probably have to do it soon, but no, next few months because then it will soon be summer and we won't even be able to bloody make a spark, let alone have a fire. By the time we clean up around here and leave the living trees and get rid of all these dead fallen branches, it'll be bloody awesome. It will. All right, subscribe, please. Like, share, ring the bell, do everything. Tell your friends, tell your mum, your dad, brother, sister, uncle, auntie. Tell your dog even. Dozer, tell your, tell your dog about Dozer. See you next time, folks.